The countdown to Tuesday is in its final days. Ahead on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 6.30, how Clark County officials are preparing for Election Day. A large-scale search is on for a missing Summerlin woman. I'm Adrian Arambulo. I'll have that story coming up in a live report. And a ride on this plane came to a surprising end for its passengers. See what forced it to land on a North Las Vegas street. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6.30. It's not just news, it's Eyewitness News. Just three days to go until Election Day in Clark County is getting ready. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Colleen May. Early voting is over in Nevada. Now election workers are preparing for Tuesday. Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Cindy Caesar shows us what's being done to ensure a flawless election day. Election worker Max Sims checks that little green seal on all the boxes from the early voting machines to ensure that they have not been opened until election day. Sims has worked on a part-time basis as an election worker for seven years. The 74-year-old retired aerospace engineer has seen a lot of changes since he began this job. When I first started out, we had the old key punch. Then we went to the uh, electronic machines, the AV2 machines that are touch screen. And then now we have the, this is the state of the art in, in uh, voting machines. So state-of-the-art that Nevada is the only state to have the paper printout on all electronic voting machines. That could come in handy if there was a mandatory recount. Larry Lomax with the election department says that voters seem pleased so far. Election workers have marked the over 271,000 residents who have already early voted so that they can't re-vote on Tuesday. Election workers are also taking the 400 voting machines from early voting and reconfiguring each and every one of them so that they're ready for the individual precincts come Tuesday. Refurbishing them so that they can be prepared to go out Monday for the general elections. So it takes a lot of work to, uh, to get them all ready for them. And the election department says it will be ready for the hundreds of thousands of voters expected at the polls in Clark County on Tuesday, Cindy Caesar, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. On Tuesday, polls are open from 7 in the morning to 7 p.m. If you don't know your voting site, go to our website at klastv.com to find it. Early voting, by the way, for the general election officially wrapped up last night. Here are the final results. Yesterday, more than 35,000 people took advantage of early voting. Overall, more than 270,000 people cast their votes early. Former President Bill Clinton wrapped up a two-day campaign stop in Southern Nevada today. Mr. Clinton stopped for Senator John Kerry this morning at a senior citizen center in Henderson. The former president told the crowd why they should side with the Democrats in this election. So I ask you not to be moved by my presence, but to listen to my reasons for why I think John Kerry and John Edwards should be elected. Because this election will really have a very, very profound impact on how we live, what our children and grandchildren's future is like, and how we relate to the rest of the world. Mr. Clinton left for New Mexico after this morning's speech. Yesterday, the former president held a rally outside the Clark County Government Center. Vice President Dick Cheney will make one more visit to Nevada before Tuesday's election. Mr. Cheney will attend a rally in Henderson on Monday at 2.40 p.m. at Green Valley High School. It is open to the public, but you need to get a ticket through the Republican Party headquarters to attend. Mr. Cheney will then travel to Sparks for another rally. The visit will be Cheney's seventh visit to Nevada this year. A Summerlin woman hasn't been seen or heard from in four days. This weekend, a massive search continues for 26-year-old Teresa Insana. Eyewitness News reporter Adrian Rambulo joins us live from Summerlin with the latest on this search. Adrian. Colleen, the search efforts for today at least have wrapped up, uh, wrapped up just a few hours ago. They started mid-morning. It has been a troubling few days for Ms. Insana's family and friends, but still they're very grateful for all the help they received from dozens of volunteers. If anybody knows anything, please call the TV station or to or the detective's office. It is a concerned plea from Joseph and Sana, who is living every parent's worst nightmare. Poor, bubbly, fun-loving girl. The last time anyone heard from his daughter, Teresa, was Tuesday night. Saturday morning, Joseph and Sana, who just flew in from New York on no sleep, joined dozens of volunteers in a large-scale search. 
The uh, purpose of our search is obviously to generate leads for Among the volunteers, family, friends, co-workers, and concerned residents. Police had searched in Sana's home this week, but found her purse, car, and dog still in place. And her dog was left in the apartment, you know, so, and everything was left in the apartment, so it's just mind-boggling. One by one, volunteers headed to a designated command post, each one equipped with photos, radios, and maps. So we're looking for the people that might not watch the news, that when they get a knock at the door, they actually talk to one of our volunteers, and, and they're able to come up with some type of information. And it's going to be Radio 21. Insana's two best friends were there and soon headed out to help out. We're looking around for our friends. Understandably, many questions remained on their minds. That's all I could think about and just who, where she would be, who would take her, who would hurt her. More than 60 volunteers canvassed the Summerlin area with a search area being six miles in width, the center point being Insana's home. And despite all the hard work, at the end of the day, there are still no answers. But many say they'll be back on Sunday. Metro also searched nearby mountain and desert areas. They say for no other reason that it is in that search area. The search efforts are expected to pick up again tomorrow morning. Reporting live, I'm Adrian Arambulo, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Metro tells us it's handled about 4,800 missing persons cases this year. Now, if you have any information about Teresa Insana, you're asked to call 229-LOST. A small plane made an emergency landing on a North Las Vegas street this morning. The Cessna had taken off from the North Las Vegas airport when the pilot discovered engine problems and decided to land. A Las Vegas family of four were on board. No one on the plane or ground was hurt. Officials are now trying to figure out why the engine failed. A man is dead after crashing his car on Flamingo at I-15. Eyewitnesses say the driver was headed eastbound on Flamingo when he drifted off to the right and hit a traffic signal pole head on. Emergency crews had to cut the car open to get the man out. Investigators aren't sure yet whether alcohol was a factor in the crash. A woman is in critical condition after police say a drunk driver slammed into her car head on. This crash happened this morning on Lamb near Owens. Police say the woman was headed south on Lamb when a man in a pickup coming the other direction crossed over the median and hit her. Both drivers were hurt, but the woman's injuries were more serious. She was taken to UMC trauma. Well, there is a handful of Halloween events going on around the valley tonight and tomorrow. We'll show you a few next on Eyewitness News. Plus, ghosts and goblins mean dollars and cents for retailers. You'll see how the Halloween holiday is translating into big business, especially when it comes to adults. And it's Celebration Saturday for several college football teams. Chris Matthews will show us how history was made in College Park coming up in sports. And I'm Ted Florendo live in the Channel 8 weather office. Only one day before Halloween. Doesn't look too spooky outside. Here's a look right now at some real-time conditions. 61 degrees outside at Eisenberg Elementary in North Buffalo. No winds being reported. So what's in store for tomorrow? I have the answer coming up in your neighborhood weather. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6.30 with Colleen May. Neighborhood weather with Ted Florendo and sports with Chris Matthews. It's not just news, it's Eyewitness News. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6.30. It's not just news, it's Eyewitness News. If you're looking for some Halloween fun tomorrow night, here are a few ideas. The Fashion Show Mall on Las Vegas Boulevard will offer trick-or-treating from 4 to 6 p.m. The Stephen Kids Not So Scary Haunted Clubhouse runs from 3 until 8 tomorrow. That's at Decatur near US 95. The cost is $7 a child. And the City of North Las Vegas Safe Halloween. It's called Safe Halloween. It runs from 5 to 8 at the Home Depot on West Craig. You can find all the Halloween information you need at our website, KLASTV.com. Halloween, by the way, is just as much of a holiday for adults as it is for kids. Big people are spending big bucks on everything from costumes to elaborate lawn decorations. That means, of course, sales are up for many retailers. Retail experts and store owners say the Halloween rush is earning an important place in business every year. Halloween can fill an important seasonal void between back to school and Christmas. I've done better every year since the year 2000. Mm -hmm. The only year we went down is in, in, uh, in, in 2001 because of 9-11. And then it's been a steady climb back up. Retail experts say Halloween has become one of the top reasons to throw a party. It's the third largest party day in the U.S., behind only New Year's Eve and Super Bowl Sunday. So what kind of weather can you expect for trick-or-treating? 
Ted Florendo will have all the answers coming up in your neighborhood weather forecast. Here to look at the weather. It's that time of year when we fall back, which means this year we get an extra hour of uh, Halloween trick or treating. Oh, trick or treating, yeah. yeah, yeah, no complaining there. Yeah, definitely tonight. Remember to set the clocks back officially at 2 a.m. And it looks like, uh, remember, when you set the clocks back, remember to also change the batteries also in your uh, smoke detectors. It's something we should always do every time we move the clocks forward or back just to be on the safe side. Hey, outside right now, upper 50s, 59 degrees to be exact. It's somewhere on the Royal High. Winds also nice and calm for us so far. Paul E. Kelly Elementary on the west part of town, 61 degrees for us. Also light winds. And on the southwest part of the city, 61 degrees winds west-southwest at 3 miles per hour. Humidity still up to 38%. Uh, Here's a look right now all across the valley, 58 degrees to 68 degrees. These are your current temperatures now. Some neighborhoods uh, down in Wigwam at 59 degrees, 60 for us on the northwest part of town. Outside the valley, though, uh, 55 for us uh, Indian Springs, 60 in Mesquite, Overton at 57, 59 currently for us at Lake Mead. Going to be a cool night indeed. Highs got in the low 70s to upper 60s in some neighborhoods, 68 for East Sahara on the east side there, 69 for Overton, Lake Mead 67. Boulder City came in about 64 degrees. Official high, though, for us here in the valley. Well, that was 66 degrees, up a few degrees from yesterday at 62. Normally, though, we're supposed to be at 74 degrees overnight low. Whew, 44 degrees overnight. Okay, here's what's going on all across the region. A cold front is slowly moving its way in, and along with that, it could send a few showers to the north of us and to central portions of Nevada. I really think we'll stay nice and dry, but uh, we see if we'll see a few more clouds, and it will get a little breezy as that cold front starts to move its way in. So here's a look right now to your True View forecast. There's the Spring Mountains right here, and this is from the morning all the way till early, early morning, rather till tomorrow morning. Looks like by 9 a.m. we'll see a few more clouds out there, but otherwise a mostly sunny day and the evening looks pretty good too. Tonight, 46 degrees, a few clouds. Turn back the clocks tonight. Light wind for us. Tomorrow, 67 degrees will be our high. Mostly sunny and don't forget, could get a little breezy at times. Put the jackets on the kids just in case. 70 degrees, mainly sunny. Winds northerly at 10 to 15. Breezy at times at the lake. Mount Charleston, we'll see some breezy winds there. More sunshine, 47 degrees will be our high. Okay, breezy on Sunday and a chance on Monday too, but otherwise plenty of sunshine all throughout the week. Uh, looks like those highs will be in the mid-60s, flirting around the upper 60s too. And your election day forecast, 64 degrees, mostly sunny for us. So a great week to get out there and to hit the polls if you haven't done already. All right, thanks, Ted. Chris sure. Matthews is here with sports. Some college football fans are a little surprised today. Yeah, and some are probably upset, too, because there was a shocking upset in college football. In fact, the celebration means history was made at the University of Maryland, a first ever for the Terrapins. Plus, hey, speaking of celebrations, a gigantic parade taking place in Boston today. The Champs Parade through town. Sports is coming up next. Cowboys and Sooners saddle up in Stillwater. Boy, if you like offense, you would like this one. Lots of offense as second-ranked Oklahoma super freshman. And there he is, Adrian Peterson gets loose. And look at this, the guy's gone. One of the best backs in the country. 80 yards for the touchdown, 35-21 Sooners. But Oklahoma State, they had visions of pulling off this upset. Bernard Morrison caps a drive. It's a three-point game. And that score held up because the field goal just wide. So Oklahoma wins it, final 38 to 35. You know the Utah Utes paying attention to this game today. Fifth ranked Florida State visiting unranked Maryland. The Seminoles on the ropes trailing the Terrapins. Defense impressive. Equally as impressive was this 35 yard run by Jojo Walker. The Terps trying to get their first win over a top 10 team in 15 years. Seminoles though they come up big with a touchdown of their own. Late in the game they pulled it within three. But how about this? The Terps hold for the first time ever. Maryland beats Florida State 20 to 17. Seems like each year Northwestern pulls off an upset. Purdue star quarterback Kyle Orton having all sorts of trouble today. Their Heisman candidate was replaced by Brandon Kirsch. Here's the big play late in the game. Noah Heron gets to the outside and into the end zone. Wildcats win their second game over a top 25 team this season, beating the Boilermakers 13 to 10. That's Purdue's third straight loss after a 5 and 0 start. Mountain West football now. The Rebels Cougars had the weekend off, but not the Rams and Lobos. New Mexico visiting Colorado State. 
Two-point game here in the second half, and here's the backbreaker. Lobo's Hank Basket running clear across the field to find blockers and a lane, and he picks up both. Down the sideline he goes. He'll find the end zone. Both teams would later add a field goal. New Mexico still in the hunt for a bowl game. They beat the Rams 26-17. to UNLV hosts Wyoming next weekend and check out the score today. They destroyed Air Force 43 to 26 and right now Utah ninth ranked Utes leading San Diego State 7 zip in the first. And we cannot forget tomorrow's NFL schedule here on Channel 8. The Ravens play the Eagles in the early game and then the second game. Oh, it's going to be a great one. The unbeaten Patriots will travel to Pittsburgh. A terrific Halloween Sunday set up right here on Channel 8. Boston Red Sox fans have waited a lifetime for today's celebration. An estimated 3 million fans turned out to see the world champion Red Sox. The parade wound from Fenway Park past Boston Common, City Hall, onto Charles River where players jumped on one of 17 amphibious vehicles. The parade continued on the water. Pedro Martinez got beamed by a baseball out on the water. Someone threw a baseball from the shore and smacked him right in the forehead. He was okay. Police say 10 people were arrested, a couple dozen injured. Uh, I, I don't think I will ever get any, any bigger gift that, than I got right now. Uh, our philosophy after being down games three, three to nothing was just win the day. They may not wear their hair normal and they may not dress normal, but they play the game about as good as you can. For that, we should all be proud of them. All right, now Nextel Cup racers, they go tomorrow. A few of them raced in today's Bush race. It's the Aaron's 312, and boy, some heavy hearts remembering those Hendrick Motorsports members killed in a plane crash last week. Four drivers are taken out right here. It came down to a restart with just a few laps to go. And Nextel Cup regular Matt Kenseth holds off Las Vegas Kyle Bush. Bush drivers, well, Bush rather, drives for Hendrick Motorsports. He released a statement after the race saying, I tried the best I could. My heart and prayers go out to the Hendrick family. Hey, Las Vegas, Andre Agassi has moved into the title of the Stockholm Open. He beat Germany's Tommy Haas 7676. He'll play Australian's Tomas Johansson for the title tomorrow. Finally, bull riding. The best bull riders are back at the MAC tonight. And what a wild ride last night. The most frightening thing, I would think, getting hung up and check it out. Andre Marias, his foot gets hung up on the other side of the bull. Boy, these guys are real tough and gutsy, like a rag doll getting tossed around there. He would be okay. And the riding gets under, look at this guy right here, into the chutes. The riding uh, underway right now. We'll have some more highlights for you tonight at 11 o'clock. That is wild stuff. Yeah, I can't imagine what goes through your mind when that's happening. Or yeah, just especially so when quick. the chute opens. Well, I, I don't want to do it. Hang <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> we'll be right back. In an effort to increase voter education and participation, Channel 8 is providing free airtime to qualified candidates. Every night until the election, you'll hear directly from the candidates in an unedited statement. Tonight, we hear from the candidates for U.S. Senate responding to what they believe is the most pressing issue facing Nevada and how they plan to address it. I'm Richard Zeiser. I'm asking for your support to serve in the United States Senate. Nevadans are concerned about security, national security and economic security. The terrorists on 9-11 attacked our nation at the very heart of our economic system. The Twin Towers were a World Trade Center. Citizens of America and many nations worked there, and it held elements of our commodity exchange affecting nearly every industry in our nation. We must never give in to terrorists. Their goal is to destroy our American way of life. I will fight the war on terror to secure this nation, and I will plan for the future to protect our people against missile attacks with a strategic defense plan. A strong economy is essential for a secure America. I will work to create economic opportunity by reducing taxation, regulation, and litigation. I will promote common sense laws that encourage personal responsibility so small businesses can prosper and provide the jobs America needs. Join me, Richard Zeiser, and let's make a change in the United States Senate. Our fight to keep deadly nuclear waste out of our state is the most pressing issue facing Nevada. I've spent decades fighting the dump, and today we're finally winning. The courts have ruled that the standards to open Yucca Mountain are not safe enough. The cost to open the dump are too high. And we have a promise from John Kerry that he will stop Yucca Mountain when he's elected president. Communities all across the country, just like Nevada, have said we will refuse to let this deadly substance be transported on our roads and our highways and our railways, past our schools and our churches and our homes. 
I will not let tens of thousands of shipments of nuclear waste come to our state. I will never give up on my fight to stop the nuclear waste dump because there's never been a bigger threat to the health and safety of Nevadans. Coming up tonight on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 11, a local reservist gets ready to answer the call to duty in Iraq for a second time. Hear his story tonight. And a voter is arrested at the polls. See what landed him behind bars. These stories and all your late breaking news. We hope to see you tonight at 11 o'clock. Have a great Saturday night.